story time about how my best friend was stealing from me. A little background information, I was 17 or 18 whenever this all happened and I was a senior in high school. Now my family and I had just moved to a new state and that is where I met my best friend who we are going to call Grace. Now Grace and I clicked instantly, but anytime that we would hang out she would always want to come to my house and never wanted to go to hers. Her excuse was that she had a lot of siblings and our house was super small, there was nothing to do, you know, which I didn't really care. I had no problem with this at all until some weird started happening in my house. And when I say weird, I mean that stuff in my house literally started disappearing. Now at first I wasn't that suspicious because it was just my clothes. And y'all know how things get lost in the laundry sometimes. But then it started to become stuff like my shoes and purses. So you know, I go and I ask my mom if she's seen any of my clothes or shoes or purses. And she goes and looks through her things to see if anything might be mixed in, but while she's doing that, she's realizing that some of her shit's missing too. So at first, we're thinking that it's the cleaning lady, which I feel super bad about, but you know, before we blame anybody else that, you know, we love and trust and we think would never steal from us, we would think that it would be more logical for somebody who doesn't really know us to steal from us. So we confront her and she denies everything, but just to be sure, we did something to test her and she did not steal it. But after this, we're getting a little bit worried that other stuff in the house might be missing, so we go and look, and our jewelry is missing as well. So now, we only had two suspects. First, we had my cousin, because she would stay over sometimes, and then we had Grace, which I thought was very unlikely because she was always with me. But nonetheless, I started to be more cautious around her. Like, I would try to be more aware of where and what she was doing while she was in my house. And for a few days, nothing happened. So obviously, after a few times of her coming over, I was 99.9% .9 sure that she wasn't stealing from us. But then, of course, the one night, she must have not realized that I was still awake because she got up to, I'm assuming, go to the bathroom. So I keep pretending to be asleep. And when she walked out of my room, I saw her walk towards the living room. And I decided not to go out there. Instead, I was gonna wait until she came back because that would be super awkward if I just went out there and she really could have just been getting some water or something. Well, what do you know? She comes back with some of our shit and she stuffs it in her book bag. So I decided not to confront her. I actually wait till the next day to just tell my mom about it. And that's when she told me that I just wasn't allowed to speak to Grace again or see her. So I go to her house to surprise her. Her sister ends up answering the door and she lets me in. But you know, she brings me into the living room and I'm sitting on the couch and whenever Grace comes into the living room, you all should have saw her. It looked like she's seen a ghost. And then she goes, why are you here? Like girl, you're not even gonna pretend to be happy to see me after you just robbed me. How rude of you. No, but I actually told her that I was there to finish a project with her, so she was like, okay, we can do it in the living room. And then I tell her that I need to go to the bathroom, and I go back, I find her room. As soon as I walk in, I see my stuff. So I pull my phone out, and I record everything. And she walks in her room, I don't even care, I'm literally still recording everything. Like, she's crying and saying, oh my goodness, like, you know, my mom made me steal this stuff because we're low-key down bad right now, and we need money, da 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 da, -da and she knew y'all were rich. Babe, do me a favor, save the sob story for someone who cares. And okay, just for giggles, let's say that you are struggling. If you're struggling that bad, you would have sold my stuff because why is everything still in your room? So, you know, I threatened to call the cops on her unless she gives all my stuff back and she didn't want that, so obviously she gave it all back. Well, I did find out a few days later that she was, in fact, trying to sell my stuff, but I don't care. This is going to be a story time of when my stepbrother killed our dog and fed it to me and my little sister for dinner. Let's get right into it. So my mom had died when I was younger and my dad had remarried. So I had a stepmom and she had a son. And let me tell you, we did not get along. I fought with him all the time. He would always bully me and my little sister and make fun of our weight. He would threaten to beat us up just for fun. Like, you in our house. Get it together. I began to scold my dad because he was the one who brought them in this house and he wasn't doing nothing about it. He knew they were tearing our family apart and he did nothing. So, anyways, one night, my parents weren't home and my stepbrother had to watch me and my little sister. So he was upset because he had plans to hang out with his girlfriend. But that really sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> Let me stop coming at this man. It's just making me angry thinking about it. So my dad had sent my stepbrother money so he could go get groceries so he could make us dinner. But my stepbrother didn't want to so he sent me instead. Oh mind you, I was like 12 at the time. And he sent me alone and my little sisters were sleeping. When I came home and knocked on the door, I noticed that our dog didn't run up to see who was at the door like she usually did. Then I smelled something coming from the kitchen, like for part two. It's gonna be part two of how my stepbrother killed our dog and fed it to me and my little sister for dinner. So like I said, I got home from the grocery store and our dog didn't run up to the door like she usually did. I didn't think much of it and then I smelled something coming from the kitchen. What could he possibly be cooking if there's no groceries? And no, I didn't automatically think, oh, he's cooking our dog. It's just 
Hold on. Whatever was cooking on the stove, it made the whole house sting. Now that I think of it, I heard the laundry machine going and my family had a set schedule for laundry. Like we never did laundry off schedule. So that was kind of weird. My parents are just very organized people besides the point. So I go upstairs to wake up my little sister and I see my stepbrother pass me and go down to the kitchen. An hour or so goes by and he calls us downstairs and says dinner is ready. All he did was boil some corn, give us canned peas and some slab of meat. The meat was burnt by the way, but I guess food is food. So we started eating this atrocious meal and all I could think about were these tiny little hairs that just kept going in my mouth. I kept pulling pieces out of my mouth. Mind you, this hair had no color. It was burnt. Now our dog loved to eat dinner with us, but she was nowhere to be seen. I started looking for her and I realized that she's missing. This is gonna be part three of the time my stepbrother killed our dog and fed it to us for dinner. So like I said, I started looking around for the dog. I asked my little sister if she's seen her. She said no. So I asked my stepbrother and he says no too. So we trying to find this dog. I call my dad. He says she probably ran away, but no one let her outside that day. And I know she didn't just go outside. So the days pass and we're still looking for her and we hang up missing posters. I got my friends to help me. My dad's looking, my stepmother, my little sister, and even my stepbrother. As time goes on, my little sister and I began to fall sick. We go to the doctor. They say we have stomach problems. They said it was probably from something that we ate. And I'm thinking to myself, hmm, what abnormal thing did I eat? That random slab of meat. Because there was no groceries where he find that meat from. So I'm putting pieces together. You know, we're falling sick. The meat was hairy. Our dog is missing. Hmm. Eventually, my dad ends up finding the dog, but it was dead and cut up. It's gonna be part four of the time my stepbrother cooked our dog and fed it to me and my little sister for dinner. So my dad ends up finding our dog hidden under some sticks in our backyard, but it was dead and cut into pieces. I might have been 12, but I wasn't dumb. I knew what's going on. So once my dad brings us this news, after he's done telling us what he found, I pulled into the other room. I told him what I peeped. I was sobbing and I told him I think it was my stepbrother who did it. I told him about the dog not meeting me at the door, the smell of the kitchen, the hairs, the laundry, the fact that we got sick i gave him all the puzzle pieces but he told me that he didn't believe me he said and i quote your stepbrother might be mean to you but he's not crazy i said because it's right there it is right in front of you like, the evidence speaks for itself i ain't gotta say too much so my dad ends up not doing anything to my stepbrother he faced literally zero consequences i'm 19 now and i don't talk to him anymore till this day i 110 percent believe that my stepbrother did it story time about how i actually got away with sneaking out it was the summer before my junior year in high school. So my sister and my friend were sleeping at my house. And I didn't live with my parents at this time. Well, 2 a.m. rolls around and we get a text from our friend. And he goes, oh, do you want to come to my party right now? And we really wanted to go. So we had to come up with this elaborate plan on how we were going to get out of my house and get back in. Because we had to worry about a dog who freaks out every time someone leaves and comes back. Motion censored lights. Adults waking up at 4.30 in the morning. And I was on the first floor of the house, thank God. So I had my sister put the dog in the bedroom so that way he wouldn't bark whenever we left. And my sister really took one for the team here. And then I told her whenever they wake up, let the dog back out of the room and lock the door. Just in case they came to check in on us. So we called an Uber and bolted out of my house. Like for part two anyways so you know we're at the party and we're having a great time and i look at my phone and i realize that it's four o'clock and they wake up at 4 30 a.m so we ordered an uber and we had the guy drop us off down the street so we're walking down the street and we finally get to my neighbor's house and we can see all the lights were on in my house and my sister's been texting me the whole time basically saying oh they're awake i hear them omg like you better hurry up and i'm texting her like get the dog in the room because he would have barked loud as hell if he saw us and i forget if it was me or her but one of us had to pee really bad and peed somewhere so we're basically on our stomachs crawling back to my house through my yard so that way none of the motion sensor lights come on and one of them came on and the windows don't really have curtains so i could see my path like looking outside the window oh there's gonna be a part three okay part three but for all the new people guys stop telling me to post the part two because i always post my part twos Okay, so the motion sensor light comes on and we literally stop dead in our tracks. Meanwhile, we're literally laying in the grass, like just don't even know what to do. And there's this side door that we were gonna go through. So my sister put the dog in the room and we're just waiting for the techs to run in the house when they're both upstairs. But my pap was looking outside trying to figure out why the light went on. And then I hear him say, oh, it must've just been a deer. So my sister finally texts us like five minutes later that, you know, they're both upstairs. And I waited so I couldn't see them in the window anymore. And we bolted in the house. And I ran in the bedroom and we both smelt disgusting because we were both laying on the grass outside. 
When we get in, we lock the door so that way we can change our clothes, act like we're going to sleep, and then unlock the door. And my grandma comes down literally 10 minutes later to check on us. Like if you want more stories on me sneaking out. <laughs>